Today in our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited, we're going to be taking a look at the Roadmaster Stoplight Switch Kit, part number RM-751490. So here's what our stoplight switch looks like once we have it installed on our Jeep. And I have this panel removed underneath the steering wheel so we can see a little bit better. Now the purpose of this kit is because we're going to be flat towing our Jeep and our supplemental braking system has an indicator light. Now the way our Jeep is wired up, it has a retained power for the accessories, which means that our brake signal and the factory brake switch will work for a few minutes when the key's off, but after a few minutes it goes dead, and then we won't have a signal to send up to our monitor light. Well, with our stoplight switch, we're gonna get a true reading of our brake pedal arm movement rather than just that power wire. So whether our supplemental braking system is pushing on the brake, applying it, or if something were to fall onto our brake and apply them, that is gonna send the signal to our monitor light so we know exactly what's going on. It is gonna be a pretty straightforward installation. We're gonna have this bracket that we'll have to put in place and then put our switch in and make a few adjustments. So let's show you how to do that now. To begin our installation, we're gonna remove this panel here. Now it should just pop out but if you're having a little bit of trouble, you can take a plastic trim panel tool and you're just going to go along the edge here and you're going to pull this panel directly out. There's just clips holding it in place. So we're just going to work our way around, unclipping them. And we can set this aside. With that panel removed, if we find the steering column here, and we look just to the left of it, there's gonna be a bolt that we're gonna to have to remove. We wanna grab a 13 millimeter socket and coming from the bottom, just kind of feed it up. Usually helps to use a long extension. And then we can remove the nut that's right there. So we can grab our bracket and the stoplight switch. Now the switch is gonna have two nuts and a star washer on it. We're gonna to wanna to remove that outer nut as well as the star washer. And on the bracket, it's gonna be extremely hard to see, but one hole is just slightly bigger. And if you try to put the stoplight switch in, it won't fit. So we're gonna use a larger one where it should just slide in pretty easily. And for now, we're just gonna kinda of adjust this nut so it sits about halfway and then loosely put the star washer and the other nut in place. We don't want it super tight right now, we just want it tight enough that it's not gonna be moving around too much on us. And then we're gonna take our bracket and we're gonna slide it over that stud and secure it with the nut that we removed. Just get it on there hand tight for now. And you can see that our switch is gonna hit this plate here that's connected to the brake arm. So we can hold our switch in position, make sure it's lined up properly, and we'll tighten down that nut. With our bracket and stoplight loosely in place, we're going to start making our electrical connections. Now on the back, we're going to have two black wires. We're going to need to strip back the ends of each one. One of them, we're going to take one of our wires that comes from our Invisibrake kit, and one end's going to have this connector on it, and the other end is just going to be a bare wire. We're going to strip back the bare end, and use a buck connector to connect it to one of the wires on our switch. Now it doesn't matter which wire we go to, you just wanna make sure that you have a good connection and then you get your buck connector all the way on. With our one wire connected, on the other wire, we're gonna take the included red wire in our kit, we're gonna strip back one end and crimp on another buck connector and connect it to the other wire on our switch easier to come through this hole here to connect it but just make sure to route the wire back down through the back side so we don't have that wire sticking out the front so we're going to route our wire through the back side now both the red wire and our monitor light wire is going to have to go into the engine bay so we'll use the same grommet that we used for all of our other wiring just to the left hand side over by the firewall once we have most of our wire pushed through, or a little bit, we'll move into the engine bay and pull all the excess out. 
Now you want to be careful not to pull too tight and it's not a bad idea to go inside and double check and make sure the wires didn't get hung up on anything. We're going to start with our red wire and this is going to be the one supplying power to our switch. So we're just going to route it along the same way towards the passenger side where our battery and fuse holders are in place. Let's go behind these brackets and go towards the passenger side. So we routed our wire over towards our fuse box and our battery on the passenger side. Now if we lift up and push on these two tabs on the fuse box, we can remove the cover. Now the way we normally would supply power to our brake switch would be through a fuse tab. But if you can see, our fuse tab is made for a mini fuse where our Jeep doesn't have those, so it wouldn't even fit in the spot to put in. So instead, we're gonna be using a fuse holder as well as the provided 10 amp fuse that comes in our kit and we're gonna be going directly to the battery. So that way it's still fuse protected and we can get everything in line. So we're gonna strip back the end of the wire that we ran from the inside. We're gonna take a buck connector and crimp it on. Then we can take our fuse holder and each end's just gonna have a little bit of insulation that's already stripped back. So we'll take it off and we'll slide it in to our buck connector and crimp it in place. So now we can just kind of loosely route our wire to make sure we're going to have enough room. We can lift up the cover on our battery and we're going to be going right to the positive post. So we're going to need to grab a 13 millimeter socket and remove the nut. So we'll loosen that nut up, but we're going to need to put a ring terminal in place before we can put our wire on. So we'll slide our ring terminal over and crimp it in place. Now, the ring terminal does not come with the kit. We can remove the nut. If there's any other terminals on the battery, you wanna make sure to put those back before we put the nut back in place. And with our connections made, we can take our 10 amp fuse, slide it into the fuse holder, then we just take a couple zip ties and secure our wires and make sure they're not loose underneath the engine here. Our black wire, we're gonna run down the same way we ran our four pole wiring and we're gonna route this black wire up to the front by our electrical connector. Again, you just wanna be careful because there's a lot of heat sources and moving parts up here. So you just wanna make sure that once you route it, you secure it with a bunch of zip ties, making sure it's not gonna get damaged. So I rounded that wire up to where my electrical connector is. Now we got a couple different options of what we can do here. We can tie up the excess behind our skid plate to where you're only gonna have a little bit of that connector sticking out. And then you would take the patch cord and it would plug into the connector and the other end would go into the motorhome side. However, we're gonna wire ours directly into our six-way connector. That way it's a little bit more permanent and we don't have to worry about any kind of moisture or corrosion or anything happening to our wire, not to mention we don't have to worry about losing our patch cord. So we'll just take our connector off and ours is held on by two 5 16 self-tapping screws. So we'll pull those out. You're gonna want a little bit of room, so we'll pull our connector out just a bit. We're gonna pull the dust cover off. And we're not gonna need all of this wire, so we're just gonna give ourselves more than we need, but just enough to work with. And we'll cut our wire. And then we're gonna take the end of it, pass it through our dust cover. And once we have it through, pull the excess out, slide the dust cover back. Now we're gonna be wiring ours into the brake signal. That way, whenever the brakes are pressed, it'll send a signal to our six-way and then to our motorhome. Strip back the end of our wire. Then we can take a small screwdriver. We're gonna need to find the terminal that's labeled S on the back of here. So we'll loosen it up. Then we can take our wire, put it into the terminal. Now you just wanna leave a little bit of that copper out the very top, 
because you don't want the insulation to get stuck in there and cause kind of some connection issues. We can push the excess wire out the back. Then we can put our dust cover back on. Now I do suggest that you tie up any excess wires behind the skid plate. We don't have to worry about them. To make sure we're not going to get any kind of moisture or anything else inside of our connector, it's going to take a little bit of silicone. I'm going to fill up the back hole here where all the wires are going in. Oh, we have a nice secure connection point. We don't have to worry about any kind of corrosion building up. And then on the front end, I'm just going to take some tape, wrap it around until we get back towards that silicone. Push our wires back in place, line out the connector, and replace those two screws that were holding it in. With our wires ran and our connections made, we're needing to make the final adjustment on our brake switch itself. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to loosen or tighten the two nuts to either draw it in further, closer to the brake pedal arm, which will push that plunger in, or we'll pull it away to let the plunger stick out some. Now essentially we want to adjust it to where we have just barely any bit of travel on the pedal before it comes on. So we're going to get it adjusted using a 14 and a 17 millimeter wrench for the two nuts. And the way you're going to know you have it adjusted correctly is the wire that's going to the front for our monitor wire. We're going to want to hook a tester up to that. And when we just barely push on the pedal, we want to get that signal letting us know that it has power. So about an eighth inch of travel is what we're looking for. I'm just going to loosen everything up so I can get my switch started in the right position. You're just looking for a little bit of that plunger to stick out. We'll do a real loose adjustment by hand and then we'll come back with those two wrenches and tighten everything up. So once we have it adjusted and everything snugged up, we're going to need to take a circuit tester and make sure that our indicator light is gonna come on when we just barely push on the brake pedal. So since we have it hooked up to our six way up here, I'm gonna take my circuit tester and go to the appropriate pin, which if we're looking at it, will be towards the top, towards the passenger side. If I get an extra set of hands, just barely push on the brake pedal. We can see that my test light's coming on, so we are getting power. And that's how we're going to know that we have it adjusted properly. Now, if you need to readjust it, again, you just want to adjust it a little bit and then have somebody push on it while you're testing this wire here so you can make sure that you have the proper amount of travel. You're just looking for about, about an eighth inch, just normally how when you push on the brake pedal, you hear that click to release it so you can put it into gear. That's about the same amount we want to be able to push and have power coming to the front here. So with all of our connections made, we can line our panels back up and put everything back in place. And that'll finish up your look at the Roadmaster Stoplight Switch Kit, part number RM-751490 on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited.